but soft. What light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. There it is! Are you sure it's working? Yeah, you see that little red light? That's how I know it's working. Oh, pretty. You need to stay away from bright and shinies, Rita. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Of course I know what I'm doing. Mr. Barney told me all about how Shakespeare went. You mean about how boys play with girl parts? Let's give it a whirl! But soft, what light from yonder window breaks. It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Rise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. show on earth. I am your host and ringmaster of the macabre, Barnabas Bailey. Joining me each week in my journey into underground filmmaking is of course the lovely Rita Mortis, whose heart is as dark as it is cold. And obviously, ready to see this week's film and enthusiastic about it, Bob. Beware! I'm Shane. Hello, boobies. No! I'm trying to stay in character. Ah, I see that even I am rubbing off on you, brain box. I applaud your commitment to craft. Barney, Julie has been teaching me. Can, can I do the intro tonight? Please? Pretty please, with sugar on top. I want to be committed too. I'm Shane. Hello, boobies. What is going on around here? It's turning into a circus. Never mind. I yield the center ring to you, my dear. I shall direct from the wings. Tonight, we have a rare treat. The premiere film by Jason Daly, Beware. Jason's film, Beware, is a classic slasher that has... Shh. Jason's film, Beware, is a classic slasher. That has received many accolades. That has received many accolades. Including top 20 films to see honors. Including top 20 films to see honors. From many reviewers, including WickedChannel.com. From many viewers, including WickedChannel.com. And Midnight Macabre. And Midnight Macabre. Hello, boobies. I'm Shane. Welcome to the greatest show on earth. I am your host, Rita Morris. You've been warned. Beware. <sighs> See honors. Are we on? Are we ready? I'm standing here deep in the woods of Shady Grove at what local and state police are calling a possible satanic ritual act. Right now, it looks as though there are four dead, including the local sheriff's son. Earlier this evening, police 
found one survivor wandering the dark roads, she later led them to the site. Covering what seems to be a grave site where there could be even this is adding up to be one of the most gruesome acts of violence this town has ever seen. If we could get some shots here so people can see what's going on. Tonight, Minions, we have a very special format to present to you. A first look of the Smash movie, Beware! In addition to our normal skits, Minions, tonight you will be the first ever to see new clips from the film, Beware! In addition to the clips, we will be talking with the writer, producer, director of Beware himself, Mr. Jason Daly. He will be giving us unique insights into the creation of Beware, and also introduce us to Shane. So let's take a first look at the trailer of Beware. I'm standing here deep in the woods of Shady Grove at what local and state police are calling one of the most gruesome acts of violence this town has ever seen. Everything's gonna be okay. There has to be a gas station out here, Sean. Where are we? Excuse me, sir. Our car's screwing up and there's smoke coming out the engine. Hope you do. Wait, that's the Oh, I'm so sorry. What's the deal with the car? It's not gonna be ready till tomorrow. What's your stupid little brother doing? Looks like he ain't so stupid after all. Looks like Marco saved the day. Thank you for letting us stay here tonight. That's very nice of you. How long have you lived here in Shady Grove? Well, my family... Did you guys say Shady Grove? I heard about this place on TV, right? Now this is a good story. <laughs> okay, that was weird. sound
Come, Mr. Daly. I must tell you that Beware was one of the top three finest films, indie films, that I saw in all of 2011. I appreciate you taking the time to answer questions and share your clips with our minions. It's my pleasure, Barnabas, and I'm very happy to be part of The Greatest Show on Earth. The first thing that struck me about your film was the ethnic diversity of cast and crew, which I found extremely noteworthy. Let's take a look at the clip. Uh, what is this, a rock concert? Dude, you take that game way too seriously. Dude, if you ever played it, you would too. It's so addictive. Oh, shut up. You just wish you can play a real guitar. Nobody cares about real guitars anymore. It's all about the GM, baby. GM? <laughs> Hear what he called it, GM. <laughs> what are you, 14 years old? Come on, give me that. Hey. Uh, hey. Uh, go. Stop, stop, stop. All right, all right. You guys, it's supposed to be a fun weekend, not a freaking fighting weekend. I mean, Diego's going to be going to play soccer in Europe. And you know what? This could be our last weekend together. So the least you could do is pay him a little respect, do you think? And besides, this could be the last time we ever see him. Yes, mother. You know you don't have to go that far away to play soccer. I mean, LA wanted you just as bad. Baby, you know I got a better offer over in Europe. Besides, there's direct flights to Miami every day. I'll come visit you. I know you're gonna come visit. I know this, but it's just gonna be so different. We're not even gonna be in the same country. I'm gonna miss you a lot. When you're done with college, you can move over with me. Okay. <coughs> Bullshit. Dude, what the fuck? I'm serious, stop it. Hey, hey, don't worry about it. Listen, while you're over there, I'll make sure she gets whatever she needs. Right, Nella? <sighs> don't touch me. I'll break her fucking face. Hey, hey, don't be mad because I'm good with the ladies and you're not. Okay, that's it. That's it. I'm over this. I don't want to hear about fighting. I don't want to hear about soccer. And I definitely don't want to hear about how good you are with the ladies. Because you're not. Haha, <laughs> there she is. I knew she was here. See you, little buck? Holy shit! You want me to walk tomorrow on the roof of that? That is not even a pump alarm. You dick, I'm out of here. Oh, fuck off. All right? Oh, no. See this? Dude, you know where we're at? Yeah, in the fucking woods. Dude, we gotta get the fuck out of here. Dude, did you just hear that? You hear that? Dude, I'm getting the fuck out of here. You can stay if you want, but I'm gone. You just better know, man. How about your big plan? Don't you want it? Wait for me. Ah. Sheriff? Good, how are you? Okay. It's just how this place is around. Yeah. Well, what the hell is this? No, it's just some kids having a laugh. Even if they were being naughty, it's not like you do anything about it, is it? <laughs> right. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, I can't wait. Why the cultural mix, or did it just happen? Actually, it's funny that you ask. The movie was originally funded um, to be shot in Spanish. We had the opportunity to do the movie in both, so we actually shot the movie in Spanish and in English, and that's how the cast came about, which I would never change because I love the cast the way that it is, and um, I'm so happy with what they brought to the movie. You had a few light and color sequences that changed to match the mood. Let's take a look at the clip to illustrate this. I 
See you inside, babe. You speak Spanish? Do I look like I speak Habla Espanol? No. No. Sorry about that. You're Joe, right? Sure am. What can I do for you? We have we have your mechanic outside taking a look at a car for us. Oh. You with them? Yeah, why? Is that a problem? No, not now. I thought they might be causing some trouble. I was getting ready to call the sheriff. No. There's no need for that. As soon as we get our car fixed, we'll be out of your way. All right. Well, Jimmy's on it. He'll let us know soon. Welcome to hang out. Hello? So where were you all heading when your uh, car started acting up? The Latino Fest concert on the West Coast. If a car is fixed, that is. Well, hopefully we can get you on your way soon. Hello? What the hell's wrong with you? Dude, she's so fucking hot. Look at her. She has a huge ass. That's all you. That's all you, bro. What, am I not here? Come on, baby. It's nothing. You know it's nothing. You know you're my number one, right? No, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Hey, Joe. Did my other come in yet? Come on, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, try again. Okay, thanks. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. And you thought Shivery sure. was dead, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What? What did I do now? It's chivalry. Ah, oh, come on, potato, potato. Don't What's mind the my difference? Huh? A jerk. Forget about it. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I'll see you later. Hey, you kids. Uh, looks like we got a problem. We got to order a part, and it won't be until tomorrow. So I think you're gonna miss Menudo. What process did you use for this? Actually, for the lighting in the movie, we used a program called um, Magic Bullet. It's a color correction program that some filmmakers probably know what that is. It's, it's widely used. We use that, and my partner, Sean Copenhaver, who was great at it, he m did most of the color. Um, we sat together and decided what we liked, and we tried to do um, different between night and day. The day scenes, um, if you notice, are a lot brighter. Um, almost to give the effect that they're in Florida and that it's um, the sun shining. Um, and uh, at night we tried to go with more colors, but also give it kind of a little bit of a grainier look to kind of add to the horror. So that's why you can notice the difference between day and night. But yes, the program we used was called Magic Bullet. I'd like to take a moment and speak to you as a director, a fellow director. I noticed that you did some things that were Brilliant, in my humble opinion. Let's first talk about your camera angles. Now, you did a couple of things with the point of view shot, from an upper to a lower, from a lower to an upper. I'm speaking specifically of the grill scene. Let's take a look at it to illustrate what I'm speaking of. Ouch! Dude, dude, what are you doing? Oh. You're gonna burn the house down. Have you ever seen me use the grill before? <laughs> now that you mention it, no, no, I haven't. So what makes you think I can work this thing? I don't know. So, 
Tell me something. What? What's up with you and Maria? What? I think she likes you. Yeah. She likes you, dude. She really likes you. No, I like her. She's hot. And then, and what are you waiting for? Just make a move. I'll try it, but... But what? Dude, other women can teach you some shit. Do you know what? Just give me a few minutes. I'm gonna have it. If you be yours, and I'll swear to you, I'll talk to her. But you know what? Right now, you gotta go talk to my sister. She's waiting for you. Go, go. That's a good idea. I'll be back. See you later. Oh. oh! Now, in the clip we just looked at, there is a dialogue happening between Diego and Marco. And one sitting on a railing and the other one standing at a grill. Um, but the conversation going back and forth was from that POV. Could you talk a little bit about that? Well, the grill scene that you're referring to, um, I actually can't, is not really an easy answer for that question. I kind of just go with the flow and go with what I'm feeling at the moment. And at the time, that up angle from Marco to Diego and vice versa just, just so happened to look like the best shot to me. Um, so it's really a hard question to answer. I just kind of go with the feel uh, of, of the scene and what looks the best at the time. A lot of, a lot of this, the decisions we made are on the spot because sometimes we don't even know where we're going to film from one second to the next. That particular scene, we sat up, set up moments before we shot it in that particular area, so we made the best out of the area. We had um, one character, Diego, sit on the, um, the fence there, and it actually turned out really good the, where he was sitting and how he was talking to him. He just looked relaxed. It looked like he, they were relaxed and they were ready to just chill out um, and not worry about anything, and just wanted the characters to feel more comfortable at that point. I noticed that you did something very unique with a hard and a soft focus. The speaking character was the soft focused, while the listening character was the hard focused. I can't think of too many people in the industry that would have that such attention to detail. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. She was, she was very pretty. Yes, she was. Do you miss her? Mm-hmm. You know, Nella and I lost our mom when we were very little. That's why she's so overprotective of me. Really? So you grew up without a mother, just like me? Hmm? Yes, we did. I barely remember. All I have is pictures of her. Sorry to hear that. I try to remember everything about her, you know? Sometimes I just stare like the picture and I think about all the good time we had. Now the clip that we just saw the sharp focus is on the person who's actually listening to the dialogue. Thus, me as the viewer got drawn in more as a listener. Can you talk a little bit about your thought process on why you decided to do the soft and hard, opposing to what most directors would do? Um, actually, I'm impressed with some of your questions. I'm usually not asked particular questions like that, that as an editor, I actually, a lot of thought went into some of those scenes that really just go by certain people but in a sense that's good if people aren't noticing it and the flow to your editing is good um, but only editors or certain people that catch things in movies really ever ask me questions like that and that particular scene with Marco and Maria in the bedroom is actually a scene that I've actually discussed with um, with other people about how it's one of my favorite scenes that I was able to stay on one character and 
leave her in focus as, as maybe Marco was talking out of focus because I really wanted the focus to be on Maria. And I love the fact that I didn't cut away from her on every sentence or, um, and I really did it to just kind of, she was so strong in that scene that I just wanted you to kind of focus on her and how she was delivering the lines. And that was actually a pretty tough scene to cut as in a lot of the dialogue scenes because you're using one camera and I give my actors a lot of leeway. So they're kind of improvising the line sometimes and then I have to cut together a one camera sequence where we're shooting with one camera in different angles and I have to make it seem as though there might have been multi cameras going. So that was a pretty, pretty tough scene to do but I actually I love watching that scene back. Let's take a look at and discuss Shane. Years went by, and he was living like an animal, you know, eating whatever he could to survive. What the fuck are you? Dude, put the guitar down, okay? Let's talk about Shane. Now, with the crop of serial killers, murderers, uh, creatures, and monsters out there, it must be tough to come up with an original character. 
How did you come up with Shane, and what was your inspiration for this character? Well, Shane came about when I was a young boy, and my older brother had told me a story about a ghost who was dragging a chain along behind him, and you could hear him coming, and it would, it's scary, and then he would tell me that the ghost was coming, and he could hear the chains. Well, I kind of just, that, oh, we, that stuck with me over the years, and I wanted to have a killer where you could hear him coming with the chains dangling. So what grew from there was, how does he have chains, why does he have chains, um, and we just went with that, and then it just it seemed to just snowball and and was just great. We were, we are extremely happy with Shane, and and a lot of thought went into his costume. It's evolved over the years, and I love where it's at now with the red and the black, and um, I'm just extremely happy with him. And I hope I hope that people feel the same way that we don't want to force a, we wanted we didn't want to be too overly force him on you. We wanted to be subtle, not make him. Um, the, the craziest killer you've ever seen, but just subtle, subtle, but also stand out in a way. Um, and we're very happy with him. And um, yeah, it just it just came about from something I thought about for years and years and years. Now, a lot of independent filmmakers decide to cast themselves in the lead, which, by the way, I think is the kiss of death, except in certain situations where a master thespian takes the realm and the reins. Now, you, however, resisted this temptation. Can you tell me why? Well, actually, I gave myself a smaller role, um, if you recognize me as, as the deputy. Good evening. Hey, boss, sorry I'm late. Ah, sorry, Frank. Go ahead and take the night off. I got it covered. Yeah, right. No, I'm serious. Go on. Go home with that pretty wife of yours. Is everything okay? Well, if you're serious, I'll take you up on it. I'm sure Nicole will love you for it. I'm sure she will. All right, well, if you need anything, I'll keep my radio on. I got it covered. I know it's tough, but you gotta let that go. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Um, but I definitely did not want to be in a starring role. I, first of all, I'm not going to carry the movie. And secondly, um, it, it's a younger crowd in the movie. And the movie focuses on that. And also, it's just a lot of work. And especially this time. Uh, if there was somebody else directing or, or something to that effect, maybe, but it's just a ton of work and, and it just, in this particular scenario where we're working such a low budget, it would have been so tough to do that. Now, Jason, you had a paltry budget of $75,000! It does have a very nice ring to it. Would you share with other amateur, upcoming, and independent filmmakers, some of the methods that you found most effective for raising money. My personal experience with getting a budget um, actually goes back to I shot Beware on a micro budget back in 2000 um, on my credit cards. And what I did was I, I showed it in a couple film festivals and showed it around and, and mainly to, to friends and family and stuff like that. It never really went too far. Um, but through that, I made connections, and what led me to getting this movie produced, it was just um, uh, my now partner had a chance to produce a movie, and he had got money um, from, from investors um, where he works, and we were, we, that's how it came about. Just, so from my personal point of view, it was just going out and doing a movie years ago, and trying to make as many connections as I could, and when I did, something turned out from it. So that's that's my advice on trying to get fundraising: is just go out and do something, and 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 try to try to you know make a make a statement. You know, try to try to try to make yourself known and and show people that you can do it, and people will trust you with their money. What's next for Jason Daly? What's next for um, Road Aid Entertainment, which is myself and Sean Copenhaver? We are hoping to do Beware 2. Um, we really think that making the first movie, we're starting to get some fans, and we really think that if we make Beware 2, it'll give us a good foundation. And once we have that foundation, then we can move on to something different. But 
Um, we really think it'd be our best career move to do Beware 2, and plus we really want to do it because the script is great and we can't wait to start filming. The floor is yours. Any advice you would like to impart on our young filmmakers on how to make a very, very effective and very, very good feature film? Do I have any wisdom for filmmakers? Um, the only thing I can say is when you put yourself in, in the situation to make a film is keep pushing through no matter what. No matter what obstacles you run into, keep pushing through. It is not easy making a film. So you have to just keep pushing through. Get rid of your poison pills in the beginning. If there's anybody around you that's, that's not gelling with the set or not gelling with pre-production, get rid of those people right away. And stay positive and do your best. And as far as movie making, Sound, lighting is a must. Um, you really need to get the production value to work so people, when they look at the movie, even if the script's not the greatest in the world, they're going to look at your movie if you have certain quality of production. Um, that's the only advice I can really give. And thanks for having me. Now it's time to welcome our literary impresario of the deranged, Mr. Tim Gross. Tim will be reviewing Beware for the Bastards of Horror.com. And he will be including his review in one of his big ass books by Twisted Library Press. And now, without further fanfare, Mr. Tim Gross. Mr. Gross, as always, welcome to the greatest show on earth! Tonight, Minions, we preview the film Beware. Now, Mr. Gross, you've actually seen this film. Yes, I did. In its entirety. Sorry. No, it's okay. I, I really like this film. Uh, Beware was very cool. Old school slasher film. I love the Latino cast. I love the blood. And, of course, nice pair of boobs in it. Absolutely. But the one thing that was very cool, and they understood the formula of have sex and you die. Exactly. Now, I have seen the film myself, of course. That's what you get for being producer of this show. And I happen to agree with you. The all Latino cast was very interesting. It's something that you don't usually see. No, it was something different. I thought it added to the independent horror film. And it was very cool because they stuck to the old school kind of slasher film formula. Uh, my only complaint of the whole film was it seemed like the dialogue was forced in certain scenes that it was... Uh, more uncomfortable than every, anything. But uh, for the most part, I loved the gore. I loved how the storyline went. It uh, paced itself. And it had its nice 80s twist at the end, too. So, uh, like I said, it was a very solid three-star movie. Excellent. Let's talk Shane for a second. Now, Minions, you've seen it all. You've seen Freddy, Jason, all of the different creatures. However, in this film, we're introduced to a new guy, Shane. What did you think of Shane? I thought it was different. I... I don't know if it can, you know, if it exactly came out right on the film, how he's tied up in the woods, or chained up in the woods, I should say, uh, how he could have stayed there for the time period they were claiming he was chained there and became the animal that he was. Uh, but I did like the idea of this animalistic kind of person just from being abused for all those years. And I really like the effects with the uh, the chains actually becoming part of his flesh. Yes. Oh, yeah. That was very cool. I was very surprised they were able to pull that off with the limited budget they had. So there you have it, Minions. Three stars, a new monster, a very ethnic cast, and boobies, correct? Yes, we do have a nice... You pyramid. must see Beware. But before you see Beware, Mr. Gross, the floor is yours. Please pitch, sir. Thank you, sir. As usual... You can pick up a copy of the Big Ass Book of Gross Movie Reviews at Amazon.com. It's from Library of the Living Dead. But also, I have a new product, which ah. I do not have a picture right now, but soon. <sighs> new product placement, please, sir. At FastCustomShirts.com, you can get your brand new Gross Movie Reviews t-shirt. And the price? $10. Ah, a deal at half the price, or double the price, or three-quarters the price. 
What am I saying? Next week, Minions, join us for a very special taping. And it will be our first DVD release of The Greatest Show on Earth. Mr. Gross, thank you once again for being on The Greatest Show on Earth. We hope you enjoyed tonight's episode, Minions, of The Greatest Show on Earth! And as always, make sure you tune in next time. And don't forget to check out BarnabasBailey.com and subscribe to our YouTube and Facebook channel. No boobies. I'm Shane. Enough of this folder roll. What is the meaning of this charade, you charlatan? have you done with Bob, Boney? That's for me to know, and you to pay to find out. <laughs> Nothing like a woman scorned. While we attempt to locate our missing head case... We thank you, Minions. Without you, we would stay buried. Remember, may all your dreams be nightmares. What is that unsavory, odorous emanation? We can rebuild him. Better? Stronger.